할렐루야. 세 a y after me, sheep. You have all these problems and difficulties. You really want to resolve some problems and you're worrying about that. But God is saying through the problems, He wants to make you into a perfect person. On earth, there is no perfect person on earth, but God wants to make us into that. It's an incredible promise. So it's not just me that becomes perfect, but children, or descendants, 10,000 generations will do well. What does that mean? That means that your family will be will be shining. How, how precious is His promise? How, why do people don't really understand? And there are so many people who don't know about this great promise. God will make us into perfect. You want between spouses, you fight because you want the other person to understand you. But Proverbs 14 verse 10, who understands your heart? Only God knows. You yourself don't even know. You don't even know yourself. So only God knows. And you wish to be comforted, you want to be happy, only God can give you that. That is God's word. So today, He will let us receive the very best today. So probably, if somebody's going to give you $100,000, you probably want to risk your life and go there. That's so trash. You want to risk your life, $100,000? Oh, but Pastor Park, even if they give... Even if they give you 100,000 in one second, the more precious is when you and God, God is with you. Because you don't know the priorities. That's, that's how sad it is. Let's live a blessed life. Hebrews 9 verse 14. Let's look that up. God is love. And this love is just. On our country doesn't know what love is. People who are crazy. That is worldly love. Worldly love will kill themselves and kill their descendants. That's Proverbs 21 verse 25. So the fake Korean church is to have fake love. That's reality. We cannot follow in their footsteps. That's what we keep. We, can, we should only follow the, the truth. So this mystery of God that you and me, there's you and me who follows the mystery of God. That's why our country will do well in the future. Even if there's no light, as long as you and I are light, let us all be blessed. Hebrews 9, verse 14 and 15. Let's read together. Ready? Go. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish unto God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause, he is the mediator of a new covenant that a death taking, ha, having taken place for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first covenant, they that have been called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Amen. So you and me, our actions, we cannot change. For example, you cannot even give up drinking or quit drinking or quit smoking. People, they take medication to stop drinking and, and smoking. No, that's not really stopping because in a few days they will, re, they will do it again. They're just trying, that, trying really hard not to do it again, but they will. People, they cut their hands because they can't change their behavior, actions to gambling. That's, and then they go and do it again. And even drugs, they go, to, they go to jail, but they come out and they do that again. How do you change your actions? Only though this word today. You wish if you can just change this one action, then you think that it'll be great for you and you and your spouse. You've lived 10 and 20 years. That your spouse, if he can just change that one thing, he'll be great. Everybody has that story. After you, you meet your husband or your spouse to be, and you and you don't want to get married to that person, and your parents will say, everybody, everything, even Jade has a little speck. Even even Jade has a little speck, and that is why, with that little fault, he's a, he's still a good person. I'm sorry, but if there is one hole in a bucket, the water will all go out. But in the world, they say. Everybody wants to get married to that person because they think that person is good. As you live in this world, what are you afraid of? 
You're afraid of the, the difficulties in life more so than going to hell, whatever the problems that are in front of you. And you're afraid about what's going to happen tomorrow. That's why you buy these lucky charms. Calamity and curses. God is in control of that. If you're in Christ, whether you are a harlot even a minute ago, whether you are a harlot Rahab, or whether you are a thief, if you go in Christ, then you'll be protected you'll be, and you'll be blessed. And calamity has nothing to do with you. Even a little while ago, even if you are in danger, but if you're in a bulletproof car, then, then you'll be protected. But outside, you'll die. If you, if you leave Christ, it'll be calamity. But if you're in Christ, it's blessing. Wherever you live before, right now, if you are obedient to the mystery of, mystery of God, the calamity has nothing to do with you. And you only go down the path of blessings. You and your children will change into blessings. When we're here to receive this blessing. Today, do not just go back. Let's receive blessings today. Everybody, let's receive blessings. Everybody out here, let's all receive blessings. We have to receive these blessings. Let me read it. Again, how much more. That means, before that, the relationship between us and God, what, what blood has to flow? How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit, eternal God, eternal Jesus, and that is why the Holy Trinity, eternal Spirit, this Holy Spirit, he was, he was existing before creation, and after the whole world is gone, he will still exist. So that people say, oh, in the Old Testament, there is no Holy Spirit. You demons, eternal spirit has always been there. That means you're denying the Holy Trinity. So stop listening and stop being listening to all the demons and repent that. Even the fake churches now, they say after Jesus came, the Holy Spirit came, that he, the Holy Spirit wasn't there before. There's so many fakes that lie like that. So eternal spirit offered himself without blemish unto God. This Jesus Christ does not have any blemish. You and me, we're full of blemishes. It's not just one blemish. We have 10,000 evil and all the dirty blemishes we all have. That's why if you go to fake churches, look at those people when they go to jail, even though they did bad things, they're worse, they're worse than, they're worse traitors than the, the communists, and yet they say they believe in Jesus. How can you, how can they believe in Jesus? He himself without blemish unto God. He wants to make us without any blemish. That is faith himself without blemish unto God, the blood of Christ. Who is Christ? He doesn't have any blemish. He's eternal. Through, the, through his blood given to God and that blood, how can it not cleanse your conscience from dead works? Our actions are dirty and it's not human life. Whether they're pastor or elders, or no matter how many generations they've been going to church, they're all perishing animals. They're not honorable men. If your conscience is all dead and seared, those people whose conscience is seared, the demons are inside them, Matthew 12, verse 28. And that's why those with demons, how can they be pastor or elder or elders or deacon? These people, their actions, they only do bad things. They're all dirty people. That's why Romans 2, verse 6, whatever your actions, God will repay you and two, third and fourth generation. If you marry into that family, you, should, you need to repent thoroughly. Your life will not be prosperous. And until you repent, why? Because your ancestors, their dirty sins, has come down to us hereditary. And all the blessings that are coming your way, they block it. They return it. And the children, they, they cannot find the blessings. That's why unless you repent your ancestors' transgressions, no matter how much you repent of your, of your own sins, your blessings will not be before you. That's Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 25. So from these conscience, cleanse your conscience from dead works. So people, their actions, why are they like that? How can those people, they believe in Jesus, but they hurt other people, they do bad things? Why are their actions like that? It's because their conscience is full of demons. They go to church, but they have nothing to do with the blood of Christ. They're all fake. Their actions and their, and their words are all different. 
They cannot say what is right and what is wrong. They're all wicked. Those people, they'll only be faced with calamity. Their actions, their actions, their dirty, their conscience is all seared. And these people, these people, they go to church, they say they go to church, but they cannot serve the living God. They give service to demons, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 20. They only give service to the demons. God is surely telling us this. So then what do we need to do? And for this cause, he is a mediator of a new covenant. Who? The blood of Christ. He is a mediator of a new covenant. New covenant is a communion, is forced to repentance. Without these fakes, they don't even know this, they go to church. It's really pathetic. So he's a mediator of a new covenant, that a death having taken place for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first covenant, that had been called. I've given many sermons about being called. So if you don't wear this calling, then otherwise you'll go to hell. First Peter chapter, Second Peter chapter one, verse ten and eleven. Those people who go to church, they think they go to church. They they think they'll go to heaven, but if they haven't been called, they cannot go to heaven. God said you cannot. So they're all fakes. They all go around and they make denominations and they slander the people and say bad things about the thing. They all do, and those fakes, and then they make them into elders and elders and and deacons. They all fakes. It's really pathetic. The calamity will go down to third and fourth generation, Exodus 20, verse 5 and 6. Under this first covenant that they had been called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. All of you, today, when you came, you couldn't give up drinking and smoking and you're doing bad things before you came here. There's no way for you to leave the wickedness. Look at all the fake church, fake, fake pastors. They hurt other people, but they cannot change their actions. That's Proverbs 13, verse 19. You can never change your own actions. Go to, look, look, look at the government of officials. They cannot change. We pay taxes and we pay, pay their salaries, but they cannot change their, their salary. They, they cannot change your actions. Until you revive your conscience, your actions will not change. If you don't change, IMF will come again. What are you going to do about it? What do I need to do and what do they have to do? Countries trying to survive. Everybody's trying so hard. Everybody's trying to survive. Everybody's trying. They're doing dem de demonstrations on the streets. Is there really a way to live? They cannot answer. Why? Why are you doing something that's not going to save you? This is the only way for us to live. If you, fake churches cannot work, fake denominations are not going to work. Even Pastor Parker, all of you, if you don't know the mystery of God, it's not going to work. We have to be obedient to the word. That's when it will work. Today, let us all become blessed and let's change your actions. Before you came, you couldn't give up drinking and smoking. You're wicked and you couldn't leave the wickedness. But when you leave from here, you all change into a perfect person. This promise, let's all receive this blessing and be happy and have satisfaction. Let's save our country. You all have to do well so our country can live. You all have to do well so your descendants can do well. How, pro how precious is this promise? So God is say, telling to you and me, he wants to make us into perfect. So our actions have to be perfected to change. You say you want to go up to the mountain and you want to do meditation and you're sitting there and you think, oh, that person looks really respectful. No, they're wicked among all wicked. Jesus did not do like a meditation person. No, he was like a child. When the, when the meditators, they come, the children, they laugh. But when people like children come, the children like. That is when you can tell the difference between human and not. Even though they have, on the outside they look like human, but inside they have all wickedness. They are the worldly people who do meditation. They have all the wickedness inside them. And not only that, they have the strong demons inside. And yet people think that is a path to become an honored man. They're mistaken. Today God is telling us. Verse 14, I'll read it again. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish unto God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. He will make you into clean. 
Only one person who is like this can serve God. Amen. And that is why all of you, before God, when you change into perfect person, when your actions change, if you're not perfect, then you cannot, you're not gonna, you have nothing to show. So our country, or me, my person, our children, for us to do well, this is the only way. In your household, you want to, you tell your children to change your act, change their actions. They themselves have bad actions, and you say, "Get on your knees and stand up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you." Lift up your hands and and sit there on your knees. I'm, there are a lot of you who are teachers. They themselves, it's not working for them. Behind them. They punish their students. Isn't your conscience isn't pierced? Sure, you're like a perishing animal, so you're not pierced in your in your conscience. You have to first change. God is saying you first have to change, then you can teach others. But it doesn't work for you, and you and you try to teach others. That's reality. So today, what is this telling us? If your conscience is not Revive your actions will not change. Your actions will not change. Then what's going to happen? Then your 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 life is always a problem because your actions don't change. So because of gambling, and you can't give up. You can't give up drinking and and smoking and and cheating other people and and lying and and all this all these problems. You cannot change this. It says you cannot change it on your own. So everybody has their own weaknesses. But if they change that, then something else will come out. I'm sure if you've experienced when you have been sick, when somewhere is really sick, really painful, then the second painful you can't even feel it. But when you heal the first, the most painful area, then the second painful area you can feel it. And then after, at the end, even at the very fingertips, the little pain you can feel that. But when somewhere else is really painful, you won't even feel that. And that's what the the nurses when they give you a shot. When they hit you first, then you think, "Oh," and you don't even know that they give you a shot. But if they don't hit you and then they give you a shot, then you think that's really painful. But if they hit you first and then they put the needle in, then you can't even feel the needle. Our conscience is like that. There are three different consciences. You know about that, right? First Peter chapter three verse twenty-one. Good conscience, you have to go towards God. First, you have to change that. Second Timothy chapter one verse three: Through pure conscience, you have to meet God, and God is with you. That conscience, you have to revive that. And the third conscience, First Timothy chapter one verse nineteen: With pure conscience, where you have to even change your conscience, when you have to change your actions, then the Holy Trinity will be with you. That's the mystery of God. All that past apart. How can you make it so clean? How can you make it so short? Yes, there's many sermons on that. This is the way for you to find yourself. You have to revive your conscience. Everybody, all the religions talk about your heart is important. You know, you don't even know what's in your heart. You know, you can't even you can't even control your own heart. There's many songs about that too. From the beginning, you already know that you don't know what's inside your heart. That is not all inside your conscience. The three consciences are hiding inside your heart. That's First Peter chapter three verse four. So, which so which religion tells you this? Which religion tells you the answer to finding yourself? There isn't only the blood of Christ you can live, and that is why only God, only God. So people who don't know this, you think that they're respectful. But if your conscience is seared, Matthew chapter thirteen verse eighteen, it's like the rock. Even though you and your spouse is like that, you really wish to divorce him. But which God, Mal Malachi chapter two verse sixteen, God does not. God hates you. God hates divorces. Why? Because you're not two. You're one. People cannot separate you. But why are there so many places? People who get divorced, God hates that. So then, just the rock. So what are you going to do about your spouse? Some people, they're always. There are people who actually have to move around every couple of months. Why? Because their wife is always cheating. 
I've seen families like that. So what, what do you need to do? Do you have to kill him or do you have to kill her or get a divorce? Who is telling you to that? God is telling you to repent. She's or he's doing that because of you. That's why you have to repent. That's Philippians chapter 2 verse 4. That's faith. And that's why many people say, oh, that person is really bad. But they don't know how to repent that as their own sins and then receive blessings. That's what these churches are doing right now. They're fake churches where they don't have Christ. That's why they're always slandering other people. They're saying bad things. Oh, Deacon, you saw that. That woman, she's always cheating on her husband every, every few months. How can she be a human? They only say that, make fun of her, but they don't repent that as their own sins. Nobody has faith. If Christ is not there, that's not a church. Why? Because you have to take other people's sins as your sin and you have to repent. If you're not repenting your own sins, how can you take other people's as your own sin? That's why they're faced with calamity. That's why in their churches, they're always arguing. They're always creating denominations. They're all going to hell. This first, second Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. God is telling you, churches where they fight, they're all going to hell. And denominations they fight, they're going to hell. Everybody's the same, they're all going to hell. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. But they're so shameless because their conscience is, is seared. That's why they're so shameless. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. Let's look that up. If you don't revive your conscience, what's inside you? There's demons inside. So if you have demons inside, how can that be faith? If you have demons inside you, how can you be saved? It's really pathetic. If your actions don't change, no matter how much you go to church, you're not you're not worshiping God. Here it says you have to revive your con revive your conscience so you can you can serve God. If you don't serve God, why are you here? First Corinthians chapter ten verse twenty. You're just giving service to demons. Is that really a church? Were you giving service to demons? How can that be a church? Let's come to our senses. Why is it that everybody can't come to their senses? That's because your conscience is all seared. They're dead. Our country. How many people are trying to save our country, starting with the president? Who wants to be, who wants to ruin their country? But why doesn't it work? Because if you don't change your heart, you cannot. No matter how much you try, those those who gamble, if you lock her, lock him up, but after a year. He's going to go back to gambling. You have to revive your conscience first. Only this is the way you can change your actions. This is the only way for us to live. We can all live like this. If you revive your conscience, change your conscience. If you find yourself and change your heart, if you revive your conscience, it's not you, but God will change your actions. And you will live for the country and for its citizens. You will live for your neighbors. God will change you like that. Before that, you will not change. Your actions will not change. If your actions change from bad actions and to blessed actions. For example, if the East is blessing and, and West is, is curses, then you will turn to the, to the East. It's 180 degrees change, right? So if you want to change 180 degrees, that means you're going to break. You have to break so that your act, your direction will change. That's why it seems like you're going to die. But you, because you thought you have to go that way to live, but God is telling you to go the other way. You think that you're going to die by changing it, but you have to do that. That's why you're going through all these problems. You're saying, oh, why is it that after I did forced repentance, more problems are coming? Of course. Because you have to break to change your change your direction. Oh, there's so many blessings. This is the blessing. This is the only way for us to live. This is the only way for you and me to live. This is the only way. When you do force your repentance, when when that happens, it's First Peter chapter four verse fourteen. Let's look that up. First Peter chapter four verse fourteen. If you do force your repentance, you will be reproached. There'll be problems in your household. Why are they telling you you're going to the weird church? Now that you started going to that church, our household has become weird. Sure, you're going down the path of blessings now. Then you have to cry even more. Matthew five verse three. Those who cry out, they're blessed. Oh, why is it that I did force their repentance? More and more problems are coming. But when you do that, but when you break, and then you're going to change your direction. If you look at the bamboo stick, that try to, trying to change it. 
you have to, it has to almost be burned so that it'll actually break. Otherwise, it'll break. Almost when it's, when it's all burnt, then it'll actually change 180 degrees. But before God, when you turn, when you cry out, that's blessing. Pastor Noah says, but Pastor Park, please pray for that person. Please fast and pray for that person. I know. What do you mean you know? They have so many problems. There's so many problems. Aha. Uh -huh. He was going down the wrong path. And you have to change 180 degrees and, and go the right direction. Sure, he thinks he's going to die. But afterwards, when you when they... That is the blessed way. Let us all receive this blessing. Let us all receive this blessing today. Let us all receive this blessing. Everybody will do well. Everybody out there will do well. First Peter chapter 4, verse 14. Ready? Go. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself... If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are ye, because the spirit of glory and the spirit of God rests upon you. Spirit of glory and the spirit of God rests upon who? On you who are reproached for the name of Christ. When he, when that rests on you, the spirit of glory, spirit of God is within you. That means what's left you. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. Let's look that up. Matthew 12 verse 28 so the demons inside you and your and your conscience is all seared and the demons are leading you when the demons are inside you in your heart then it will rule you rule your head with your with your head your head only listens listen to the demons that's why you continue to listen to the demons it's the worldly education it's the worldly things the more you the more you study the more you learn then you have you listen to the demons more. And then in Christ, you want to change. And you were one with the demons before, but now you want to change. Why? Because when you have demons inside and, and, and you paid money to study all the education that was written by demons so that you become one with the demons, and you say, oh, I understand this dirty education and with your own thoughts and your own theory. But when you do forced repentance, when you have God's spirit in you and you cast the demons away and you revive your, your conscience and you, you cast the demons away and God is in you and then tells your head, go to the east. And he says, no, it's the west, it's the west. And he keeps giving reasons. And when, and when, you, continue, when you continue to cast out the excuses and then you completely change. And then so later on, you know that the worldly education, you'll know, oh, it's written by a certain who has certain people who have demons inside, then you have to use that in 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 calling people and pulling people to hear. So you leave that alone, and then you listen to God. That is obedience. And this obedience, miracles will happen. You receive answers, and you'll go to heaven. This is faith. Then your actions will change. Up until now, we were two-faced. That your head. And the demons inside was one. And that is why the spirit, the truth of God, the, the evil people, they cannot listen. Only the righteous they like. The worldly demons, they only like the, de the worldly things. That's why the fake pastors, they may give a sermon on one verse and then they add all the worldly things. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. Amen? That's what you have to differentiate. Is that pastor only giving sermons on the, de on, on the, on the Bible words? And that, then he has the Holy Spirit in. But if the pastor gives a sermon based on worldly things, then he has demons inside. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. You have to differentiate. What kind of person are you? Let's all live correctly. What, you think you don't have demons inside? Everybody has. Why? Why is it that First John chapter 4 verse 8? When you have sin, the sin, the demons will attach yourself. That's why when you do bad things, when you have sins, then you have that demons inside. Then you have other sins too. That's why the, the other demons have attached yourself too. That's why that person is covered, it's covered. That's why he does those bad things. That's what it means. So what kind of person are you and that you want to change your actions? You cannot change your own actions. No matter how much you meditate, you cannot change. No matter how respectful you are, you cannot. Only if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, they're all wicked. 
The wicked people, they don't want to listen to the word of God. They're all the same flock together. That's why you and me in the world, no matter what you do, if you don't have God inside you, then you're all wicked. Why? Because only God is good. That's Mark chapter 10, verse 18. Mark chapter 10, verse 18. Only those who have God inside, they're, they're good. Otherwise, everybody's evil. So today, the three conscience, when you revive it, then you can serve God. And when you can serve God, so no matter what you did a little while ago, even if you're evil a little while ago, this vessel, let's say that it has a towel inside, but if you clean it all and you put rice in it, then it becomes a, a rice, rice bowl. So you may have had brought all kinds of problems. Why? Because inside your heart, you have evil coming out. Matthew 15, verse 19. And this evil is 10,000 evil. And that's why you have 10,000 dirty evil comes out 24 hours a day. And this evil that comes out, so from God, when you do force your repentance, when, even when you have faith as a gift, that faith will leave you. That's 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. And that's why faith has left you and evil will be in its place. And as long as you have evil because of sin, the demons will attach yourself. Matthew chapter 12, verse 45 and 46. So because the demons have attached yourself from then, then that person becomes a really dirty person. Those who, who believed and, and then they left faith, they went to church and first they repented and they received faith, but they don't continue to repent. So then they become worse. That's what's happening at fake churches, those fake de fake elders and elderesses, those who believe for a long time, go and meet them. Before then, why is it that after you believe in Jesus, you become a worse person? That's why the rest of the family, they don't want to believe in Jesus because of that, because of that person. So when I go to a restaurant and when I try to evangelize, that's what they say. Oh no, when I look at my sister-in-law, I don't want to believe in Jesus because of her. They've all blocked evan evangelized. Why? Because Matthew 12, verse 45 and 46. They believe they received faith as a gift that was good, but after a little bit, because they stopped repenting and evil comes out, faith has left them. They only have demons inside. They, the demons, when they come back, bring seven other demons. They have eight. They become worse by eight times. And then they do all kinds of evil things. How can they believe in Jesus? They're doing really pathetic things. How can they ruin South Korea like that? You and I are all responsible for this. How much have we repented for them? That is our responsibility because we didn't pray for them. We cannot throw stones at them. We have to realize and we have to repent. Their, their sins are our sins and we have to repent that as our own sins. That is faith. Is my conscience dead or not? If you revive your conscience, unless you do that, then evil continue to come out from our heart. And because of the evilness, demons, eight demons will become inside. So even if you have one demon, you can become blind or you can't hear. And you cannot see the blessings or you cannot hear the blessings. And that's why today you go to church and you go to fake churches, they all go there. Why? Because there's no repentance there. That's Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. They all take you to hell. This is God recorded there. How many people go there that Galatians 1 verse 6, God says it's really pathetic. Why do you go where you're being doomed? And yet, people go there to be doomed. Let's all live correctly. You and me, I wish that I could just change this one thing. Those who haven't changed, I can't even give up drinking or smoking. If you can't give that up, I can't give that up. You cannot on your own. No matter how much you try, even if you bite on your tongue, you think that you've, the moment you let your tongue go, you want to smoke again. The moment you let your tongue go, you want to drink again. No matter how much you try. Why would people cut their right hand? They go and they, they gamble again with their, their feet. Because God said he can, you cannot. Unless you revive your conscience, your actions will not change. This is the only way for us to live. This is the only way for us to live. This is the only way. That's why without reviving your conscience, 
You cannot change into a blessed, blessed, blessed person. Do not hit your children. You, you tell your children, do you want to become a blessed person or not? No matter how much you try, they're not going to change. They get up and they leave and they say, I'm going to see you later. They cannot. You have to revive their, they have to revive their conscience. Because you, as a parent, have revived, killed, their, killed their conscience while your sins have passed down to third and fourth generation. That's why Exodus 34, verse 7, and says transgressions has come down to third and fourth generation. So what is there to study? Oh, is this disease hereditary or not? Why, why are you such a fool? The truth has already told us. Now they're actually studying whether it's hereditary or not. Now, before they said it wasn't hereditary, but now they say it is. It is so clear. Why are you studying? If I must study that, then I too will study. But it's it's all written there. So why are you? That's why I just let leave them alone. The answer is right there. Peeing in your sleep that is also hereditary. When I went to the States, the CPA family, he was so upset that his son keeps peeing in his sleep. So after I gave a sermon that is hereditary, he came and told me that he also peed in his sleep when he was young. And now, yes, everything's hereditary. Everything. You cannot change the DNA. It's all passed down. Ancestors of transgressions is passed down. So, is there anywhere in the world that would change? You wish that good things has been, no, bad things also has been passed down. How can the, how can the, the snakes, how can they, they, they tear up? How can the dragons cry? It's about a drama, it, it says. That is the title of the drama. South Korea, they say the bathroom and the in-laws should be far away. Why? Because if they're close, they all kill you. Why? It's from that, that drama, which is based on the history. They say that, and yet they don't know how to change that. You can, the only way is to revive your conscience. How precious is his promise? Me and my children. We can live in South Korea, can live. This is the only way. Who doesn't have demons inside? Then they belong to the demons. They're not like honorable men. Look at their household, it's all in shambles. If you look at the spouses, they're all sharpening their knives. The children, they all have knives inside. How can that be a family? They're all waiting, watching each other to kill each other. The parents are killing their children with their sins, and the parents are wanting to repay to their parents by being unfilial. This is what the reality is of households. Only when you revive your conscience, you can save them. Change your actions to so change them into filial and be, a and be patriotic and be successful. This is the only way. This is the only way. This is the only way. We have to go down this path. How frustrating is this? Amongst all that, you and me, we're so blessed. Aha. Uh -huh. There is conscience inside our hearts. The fact that we know about conscience, that's great. The only way for us to revive the three consciences is it's already in sermons on the tapes. Proverbs 13, verse 19. Let's look that up. But for you and me, we can do well. For you and me, we'll do even better. This incredible God's promise, this incredible blessings, to you and me, we will receive all these. Those who haven't changed your actions, don't worry. Your children weren't doing well and your family doesn't, do not worry about that. As long as you repent that as your own sin, God will change them. That's why your children, your family will all do well. Starting today, let's all become blessed people. Let's all receive these blessings. Let's all receive these blessings. God is so good. Let us read with one voice. Ready, go. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is an abomination to fools to depart from evil. Amen. Matthew 25, verse 2 and 3. 100% 
those who are foolish they want to go to hell when your ancestors they sin 100% their descendants will be foolish according to their their ancestors transgress they don't want to leave wickedness they don't want to leave the fake churches your family you really wish them to survive, they to, for them to live? According to the Bible, we've done something wrong. Let's go down this right path and live. The, those foolish 100% who are headed for hell, they don't want to leave the wickedness. They don't want to leave the denomination. Then you should say, ah, oh, he's surely, they're surely foolish, they're surely wicked. 100% they're headed for hell. They're arrogant 100%, they're arrogant. Because they're foolish, Proverbs 13 verse 3. This foolishness is arrogant. It's because your ancestors sinned. That's why you're foolish. Your ancestors are, are, are wicked. That household, you know what kind of household it is? When you compare it to the word, they have lived really wrongly in the past. What kind of person are you? Doesn't matter who you are, what you, what you, you can still do well. You and me, we can all do well. You can't change your actions, but God will change it. You just have to revive your conscience. God will change you into a blessed person. God will change you. Let us all be changed. Let us all be changed. This has to be fulfilled. This has to be fulfilled. So do not just leave today. Your good conscience, you'll go towards God. And pure conscience, and God will be with you. And good conscience is forced repentance. You, you're going to go towards God. That's why Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13, when you meet God, you and me were here. Almighty God, you have to meet God and He will be with you. And He, your, your thoughts and your heart, He will take care of you and you follow Him and you live with Him. This is incredible blessing. And that's why Pastor Park, when he's walking down the street, he will pray for people and, and heal them. It's not me. Because he's, because he, God is with him. He does it. That's why no matter where you go, whatever problems to that person, this earl at dawn today, this person was crying and holding on to me. That person just wait a little bit more. With my, with my greed, it's not going to happen. You have to meet God and it'll put an end. No matter what problems, it'll be resolved into a better, better. Just wait until you meet God. Just wait and be patient until you meet God and receive all the blessings. I know that you are so frustrated, but our biggest problem is that we don't have Christ. Who is Christ? Christ is pa perseverance, patience, Ex forever perseverance. So you and me, we don't want to betray him after we receive answers and go to hell. God does not want that. Your children, do you want them to be doomed? No, you want your children to do well. God wants all of us to do well. That is why, even though He wants to give it to us, all, He needs to change his, his actions first until He grows a little bit more than He will give you. What does that mean? That's love. This is what God is doing. That's why, do not be disappointed. If you do force your repentance, your, your conscience is, is revived, then Holy Trinity will come inside you, and when it comes in, your actions will change. So when you change, the 10,000 generations will change. So then your children, so do not get upset with your children, and do not throw stones at any, anybody else. You just have to do it. That sin is my sin. You, as long as you do it, please do it like this, so that you can live, and your, and your family can live. God, the Almightiness, to you and me, through this word, will perform its miracles. Everybody, let's receive answers today and change your actions and become a blessed people. Everybody, let's everybody do well. Oh, Lord, thank you. Let us all pray. My conscience has to be revived so my actions can change. My actions have to change so that God will be with you and me. Just because I go to church, God is not with me. My revi my conscience has to be revived and my actions have to change. So God will be with me. When when I serve God, God will not leave me alone, but will be with me and, and give us answers. Almighty, blessed Father, our conscience in our hearts has been seared. Father God, up until now, we were servants to the demons. Father, this hour, through the blood of Christ, through forced repentance, Father God, all of your promise, the demons that were ruling our hearts, please cast them out. 
with the Spirit of God, our actions, please change your actions. When we were unlucky into our blessed people, when our actions we couldn't change, help us to all be changed so that I can be perfect and our children can be perfect so that we can all be lights that will brighten our country. Help us all be righteous tools in saving the world. Surely today, this hour, all of your promise will be, let us all receive your promise. Up until now, we didn't know. We didn't know how to change ourselves. And we were rebreaking our children and we were hitting them, Father, this, this wrongdoing. Father, first help us to re repent through the blood of Christ and revive our conscience. Uh, let our spouses become one. Our children, help them be filial and have good relations with their siblings. Help them, help all of us and our children be patriotic to our country. Father, in the name of the Holy Trinity, only the blood of Christ, only force of repentance can revive our conscience. Please change your dirty actions. Father, help us all become blessed people. You're all, all of us become your precious children into honorable men. All this we pray in Jesus' name, giving thanksgiving and blessings. Amen.